Okay, my name is Julian Joseph and I play the piano. Uh, I started playing the piano because I came home one evening after school when I was five and my mum had bought a piano. Um, I said, Mum, you've got a piano? And she said, yep. And I came home with my brothers and she said, and you're all going to learn. That's what started me off playing the piano. Okay. Well, in terms of learning, it was classical music and possibly even listening, a sort of serious uh, attention to listening to classical music. Because, of course, when you start playing the piano, some of the early pieces you learn are come from various symphonies, so the typical one would be Ode to Joy, you'd play that on the piano. So there was an affinity with classical music early, um, and my piano teachers used to encourage me to listen to, to the music, so I did, and I loved it. But when I started listening to jazz, um, that, that really took me over. Because actually, even when I listened to classical music, I would hear, if it had interesting chord changes or something about it that was reminiscent of jazz, I would be immediately drawn to it. Now, I didn't know what that was until I started listening to jazz. When I started listening to jazz, I thought, that's the music I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. So when I'd hear Debussy or I'd hear Francis Poulenc or even Prokofiev and Bartok, the elements in it that really drew me, I found that it had influenced certain jazz musicians yeah. and certain jazz music, and I was very, very much inclined to that. Interesting, okay. Oh, buying my first jazz album or just listening to? Either one. Um, well, I think I got... I was very much interested in jazz, so I, would, I, along with my brothers, would listen to the radio like music was going out of fashion and just turn the dial until we came to something that sounded vaguely jazzy or that had an interesting twist to it, so it could be Ru Russian folk music or... Arabic music, but something that had a kind of spice to it. Um, so my listening was becoming quite sophisticated, unbeknownst to me, because I was just drawn to these different sounds. Mm -hmm. But I ref remember getting a present when I was either, I think I was 10 or 11, mm -hmm. and it was an Aragana album. Um, and it was a collection on Columbia Records uh, and I remember listening to that until it, it, it wore out mm. um, but um, really when I was uh, a little older well about 10 no when I was 11 I got um, I used to save up my money, my bus fare and things, um, and put it together with both my brothers and then we'd go and buy jazz albums. Right, okay. So we were, we were unstoppable. And we had a really great friend, a guy called Errol Shaker, who was an actor from Jamaica, who used to play and lend us um, loads of records. So we'd get albums like Milestones by Miles Davis, um, Kind of Blue, uh, numerous um, albums by Ramsey Lewis mm -hmm. and um, listen to them exhaustively mm -hmm. uh, then yeah so albums just accumulating okay. really got into Herbie Hancock from the age of 11 and then tried to buy every single thing he was on and had produced which led myself and my brothers to Miles Davis then from Miles Davis we did the same and then um, from Miles Davis got into Charlie Parker and the story goes on. Everything is linked. So greatness leads to greatness. Great. Ah, well, loads of books. Any biography you can get your hands mm. on. Um, there's a good one on mm. Hampton Hawes. There's... Um, a Jazz Odyssey, which is uh, uh, the book on 
a biography by autobiography of Oscar Peterson. Mm. Um, and books, there's, there's great books on Miles Davis, his autobiography with Alex Haley, and, and um, there's a, a great biography written by Ian Carr, who was one of my teachers on Miles Davis. He called it the definitive version of uh, a biography of Miles. It's beautiful. Um, there are many books, so any biography you can, mm. I, I'd recommend, because it, an insight into the artist gives you a greater insight into the music. Mm. And it's great to share in the wonder of these magnificent people. Mm. Uh, albums, the albums, uh, Solo Monk by Thelonious Monk, um, Miles Davis, and he has several different periods. Mm. So you should, everyone should have Kind of Blue, but you should have um, Birth of the Cool. Uh, you should have the early, early things of Miles Davis. Uh, well, you can hear Miles and Kenny Doran playing with Charlie Parker at the Royal Roost. I think that's an essential album. Charlie Parker with Strings. Um, Duke Ellington's Black, Brown and Beige. Um, also his Blues in Orbit. Uh, Herbie Hancock's Headhunters, Empyrean Isles from earlier, uh, The Prisoner, mm -hmm. very, very, um, uh, very uh, forward-thinking album. Um, Chick Corea's Now He Sings, Now He Sobs, uh, Hank Mobley's Soul Station, John Coltrane's Love Supreme. These are all mm -hmm. albums that, you know, everybody should know. Mm. Um, R. Um by Charles Mingus, um, Thelonious Monk Live at the It Club, uh, the early recordings of Louis Armstrong with the Hot Five and the Hot Sevens, um, early Jelly Roll Morton, or, or Jelly Roll Morton actually, uh, Library of Congress recordings yeah. where he's talking about the music as well. I could go on. Go on okay. I could just keep going on. Good. Weather Report, Heavy Weather. You should get Wayne Shorter's album, Speak No Evil, uh, Hub Tones by Freddie Hubbard, um, Art Blakey's albums, you know, in, in the 50s on. and the 60s. <laughs> goes on. Okay. Young musicians who are already playing, stay creative. Right. Um, play with as many people as you can. Um, also try to forge an idea of what it is you'd like to do. If, you're, if you have ambitions of being a leader, then write your own music or create your own music or your own point of view on music that already exists. If primarily you want to be a sideman, then make sure you have many of the bases covered, the different styles. Um, try and know as much repertoire as you possibly can, because if you're not going to be a leader, then it's important that when you can be called to just step in and function straight away. Um, I think always try and enjoy the music, always um, try and focus on the things that attract you to the music. Try to be as complete a player as you possibly can. So it means understand all of the eras. And you can do that through listening to the great musicians and, and building an affinity with the the repertoire of each of the eras. Yeah. Lessons have I learnt? Yeah. Oh gosh, maybe all of the above. Um, uh, the lessons I've learnt, just keep keep on. Stay with it. Right. Don't lose faith. Um, work hard. Um, keep creative. Always, always compose, always think of new situations. Um, be good to your band, always. Mm. Um, be be good to your fellow man, and stay on top of the work you've got to do. Great. Keep okay. up with yourself. Okay. Okay. How important is music education? Uh, music e education is imperative now because the pathways of learning have all but ceased to exist. The pa other pathways, meaning um, you used to learn uh, as an apprenticeship by playing with the older musicians or playing in clubs and um, sort of learning on the job. Uh, that's not so much the reality these days. 
um, education has taken off whilst many of the clubs and that club circuit has declined. So jazz education is hugely important. Now it's becoming more sophisticated and um, many uh, of the skills that you need to have in the music are now being dealt with. How important is jazz history? Jazz history is essential. If you don't know your history, um, there's a saying that if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. But I think if you understand the history, then it gives more gravitas, more weight to the way you play and to your understanding of how the music has developed. You understand and appreciate connections in ways which not knowing the history, um, you wouldn't have of sound. Yeah. And it's, it's absolutely imperative. I mean, how can you play jazz and not know the, the music of Charles Mingus? Mm -hmm. Or know who Charles Mingus is? Because I know it's hard to know everybody's music, but I think knowing the history places an importance on dealing with what's important in the music and also dealing with the preconceptions of what was important or what has built the music into how it is today. And if you don't know that, then are you really interested in it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, the word jazz for me means music created from the African-American experience through the sound of Duke Ellington, through Charlie Parker, Thelonious Monk, Miles Davis, um, and so on and so forth. It's got a swinging impetus to it, um, and the bass walks on 4-4. Four, four. Of course, there are music, there's much jazz in different time signatures, but... That, that for me with a, a swinging bass and mm. that kind of feeling is the archetypal jazz feeling. It's got to have a sense of blues in it. You know, that kind of feeling. That's jazz. Okay. I think my process is actually quite similar from when I started. I um, you know, often find something and experiment with it. I mean, I always tell my students that jazz is a music of initiative. If you don't have any initiative, then you can't play jazz. Because it requires that you make things up. It requires that you make decisions about what's appropriate. It requires that you be empathetic with your fellow comrades in jazz. So um, when I'm practicing, I just try to be um, in a space that's preparing me to be sympathetic, empathetic, mm -hmm. and able to respond in different situations, playing up-tempo, playing medium-tempo, playing slow swing, playing the blues, playing a ballad, communicating ideas um, melodically, having a richer sense of harmonic um, language, uh, trying to be more um, up, up, up on my uh, repertoire, but then really using repertoire to help myself develop my own play. Right. And that's, that's the whole point. Okay. Questions of practice, anyway. Great. Well, I see myself as a, a musician composer. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, being a broadcaster is a happy bonus. Right. Um, being an educator is something that that has become a necessary part of being a whole jazz musician, right. and it's been something that's actually reinvigorated my practice, my attention to my own understanding of the music because I have to think about 
how to communicate ideas to students. But balancing it all, you just make space for it. I mean, I think education is a part of the play now. It's almost integral. Okay. Um, the broadcasting is another responsibility. But I think it's good to have variety in your career and to look to um, expanding your horizons. And I, and I always find that I'm trying to do that compositionally. Okay. That, uh, trying to create settings that you know, push even my understanding of what it means to be a jazz musician. Oh, well, I don't see my. I don't look at myself in terms of where do I see myself in okay. this amount of time or that. When I was younger, perhaps. You did that. Okay. Perhaps I did that. Mm. I, I'm. I'm not too sure. I think you're so busy on the journey that you hope that the result will be a good result. Right. But I think you just want to be a better musician. You want to play with really great players. Um, and have your own career mm. and I have that and I do that so I'm happy so long as I can just keep doing it and keep mm. trying to get better um, hopefully bring more shape and and more variety to what I'm doing and you know, say something that's meaningful and soulful right. yeah Great. okay thank you my name is Julian Joseph and you're watching Leicester Jazz House TV.